All right, so we got some beer cooler here. It's not working. And uh, it's hot in here, but it's probably from the motor running. You can kind of, yeah, you can feel the motor running. Come down here and check out our condenser. It's not looking the hottest there. So I'm going to tear her out, take a look. You can see we got a hard start back here. So this thing's already lived a hard life. See what we can find out. All right, so I just went through hell and back getting this freaking thing out of here so we can actually get into it. It's hotter in blue blazes. Close pack for that crud. We've already got a jerry rigging uh, hard start on there. So it's it's so hot. Chances are the uh, oil's broke down and all the particles are all in the cap tubes by now. I'm going to try to cool this down and see if it's just affected that or if it's just because the condenser's so dirty. So we'll. Uh, we have to pull this thing down before we can get anything uh, definite figured out. So I do have pressure on it, not a lot. There was more in there earlier. It's probably low on charge. I got me a doubled up bag of ice. i try to pull it down a little bit. Yes, I know that the thermal overload is inside of the 3-in-1 hard start, but I don't want it running as hot as it is. It uh, could also cause other issues, and yes, I know it's not going to get the cooling deep into the compressor, blah, blah, blah. You got to do what you got to do, you know what I'm saying? So we've got that blown out. We hit it with nitrogen, blew it all out. I don't think you can tell there's much of a mess. So we're kind of at that point right now. It wouldn't surprise me it's low. It wouldn't surprise me that the cap tubes are probably plugged up. It's uh, been operated on several times, so it's still investigating to figure out what's going on. All right, so this is a little disturbing. As the temperature started to drop, the pressure obviously started to drop, so we're pretty much out of refrigerant. It, uh, we're going to hook the hose up there with the actual gauge. I'm going to pull a quick vac on this thing, dump some refrigerant in it, see if it even runs. This thing's got issues. Likely has a leak in the evaporator. Likely they need to just replace it. This thing's not in good shape at all. So we're pulling it back on this thing, we're going easy and sleazy, because I'm not going to waste a bunch of time on this thing. Uh, I'm telling you, the oil's probably broke down, but we may we may get lucky. Uh, pull through the high side first just to see if I get something through the low, and it did. Uh, I still could pull back through the valves. So it's just one of the things, I tried different directions, and try to get the heads up on whatever I can get on. Uh, that filter dryer is way bigger than the original one, so it's probably going to have to add about 2 ounces or 3 ounces for that. Factory charge is 11, so we cleaned off some of the crud off the cutting side of the blade there. It's nowhere near as good as what I'd like to see it, but until we see this thing run, I'm not going to waste a bunch of time on it. Alright, so I just shut off the vacuum pump and valved it off, and I'm losing my vacuum that quick. That's a bad sign. That's a very bad sign. So I'm gonna go grab the nitrogen, pressurize it. We should be able to hear this thing with the leak detector, it's that bad. For the ultrasonic. But this is this has got some freaking problems. I don't know if the line's cracked or what. There's something going on there. Alright, so I could hear the leak plain as day. It's uh, right there on that fat section where they went from small tube to big tube. And sleeved it. It's uh, right below that something punctured it. So the old uh, AccuTrack picked it up in a heartbeat. You can see it here. Well, they've got animal rodent repellers in here, so you, that's making my thing go nuts. But you can see that it's definitely down there. Even up here, you, you know what those rodent things will sound like once you start getting used to it. They'll make this weird, very Continuous noise. So, yep, that's where the leak's at. I'm gonna see if we can fix it. That really comes in handy. Able to squeeze it right down there. That'll fit right into the pocket and uh, solder up. All right, so we ended up pressurizing it right now. We're gonna go ahead and spray it, even though I didn't hear anything, just to be double certain. So, go ahead and get that on there best we can to get some of these other fittings here that are kind of susceptible to leaking. 
so it looks like it's fine. I didn't hear anything inside the unit leaking either. This is just not in the greatest of places. There's no room in here at all. So. Yeah, she's not in the greatest of shape, but it probably will run. We'll see. As you can see, we have no room in here at all. Everything's crammed in the way. I got everything behind me. There's just no room at all to get anything done. So, uh, my power plug is way back over in there. Can't get to that either. So, making do with what we got. Alright, so it's looking pretty good, believe it or not. Got a 121 degree coil there, 17 degree evaporator. When I disconnect, I'm not going to be dumping my high side and the low side. I just basically added an extra ounce or so for my hose. Um, so far, looking good. Um, so, go ahead and get that filter dryer done, and then we'll uh, put her back together, tell them, you know, there's potentially damage been done, but working now let it go um, it's pretty warm in here and the box is warm so as soon as it starts cooling down then both sets of pressures are going to start to drop and everything's going to look hunky dory so that's going to wrap this one up guys if you like it make sure you give it a big like don't forget to subscribe check out the facebook page and until next time we'll catch you on the next one all right guys so we're working on a t72f hydrocarbon and what we had here was this thing had an air communication code between the controller and the control module down here on bottom. So we went ahead and replaced them both. The factory had to send me a kit that came with uh, all new sensors, the uh, relay pack here, uh, the cable. Now the cable, if it was defective, you would have to run it in the back side of the uh, freezer, run it up the back side, and then basically bring it across the top and plug it into here. What we ended up doing was testing it, and one little trick I was gonna show you, I have it up here somewhere, was using a piece of stranded wire. And the only reason for it is that connector is super, super thin. So what they wanted you to do was to unplug the connector right there and up on top, and then check continuity between the three wires there, or four, and yeah, three. So I ended up putting a little thread here of the, of the wire connector into the outside too then came down with my back probes that are made for like small connectors and back probed it made sure it continuity through there then went to the number two to number three just like you would three phase checking a voltage I went ahead and checked resistance through the cable everything checked out fine tried plugging it in unplugging it nothing worked so they had to send a whole new kit uh, this thing has two compressors in it you have one here and obviously one right there. They're using an isolation relay to help divide the load up a little bit. Um, the uh, controller only controls one evaporator. So what I was double checking to make sure everything was right was that they had the sensor in here correct. Because a lot of times I've seen over the years they don't put it in the right spot. And it's supposed to be up there just like that right there, just below the top of the refrigerator coil. And um, I had to do some modifications to this thing. Uh, they come set up for a cumulative runtime, and depending on the humidity levels that you're working in, generally doesn't work very well. Uh, a lot of times I'll take these back to a time defrost and set it for every uh, six hours for a maximum of, say, 30 minutes, which is what the default is. And then the termination time, I've had problems with that also. It terminates a lot of times, I think, at 45 degrees. And you can get their book controller and all that stuff on uh, truemanufacturing.com. But originally they were at 45 degrees, and lately I've been seeing them at 60, so I just go ahead and change it. The efficiency is so minuscule, but the problems it creates is so huge. So we're just about up to 60 as it is. 
um, what I'm doing is just going in and uh, looking at your eye for information. T1 is your cabinet, T2 is your coil, and the coil's up to 55. I've been timing this defrost to see how long it would take, and we're only at 15 minutes. Uh, because this new controller would have had a whole new set of times to go off of, I went ahead and put it into a defrost ahead of time. That way everything kind of has a fresh start. And like I said, I wanted to make sure that my sensors were in place and things like that. Other thing you want to watch out for when you're having freeze ups here is that the door seals aren't all ripped to heck like these are. Uh, the reason why this happens, uh, in my opinion, is this right here. See this handle? No one knows how to use this. This right here, way too much work. This is how everyone grabs it. So when they grab it, their fingernails tend to peel it. And when you're doing that hundreds and hundreds of times over and over, because look where it's ripped at, right there where you grip with your hand. So that's the reason why that happens, and it's happened on every one of them. And technically this is a violation. When it's ripped, the health department can cite you for that. Uh, and these door seals aren't cheap. So what, like I said, I went through here and double checked that up there. It's good to go. I gotta put that back together. Uh, it's gonna kick back on here in a second. We're gonna make sure it kicks on both compressors, but for right now, everything's working good. Just wanted to tell you what it's involved here with this. Uh, it was a CE code, I believe. If not, I'll put it down below, but CE code, I believe, is what it was, and it's a communication error. Uh, when I came back, here's what really sucks. It was working. Uh, they had been unplugging it and then plugging it back in, and then sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't work. Sometimes it just started on its own out of the blue. So uh, they sent a kit that came with everything, and we just replaced the whole thing. Uh, it's all under warranty, so I want to fill you in on what I do to try to make sure these things have the least amount of problems. Uh, everyone knows that the energy efficiency stuff that they keep coming out with is nothing but usually problems. Just like this right here, two condensers, because this is an HC refrigerant, R290 propane, only has one evaporator. So they have two circuits in the evaporator. So to get around their limitations of like uh, four ounces, three ounces, whatever it is, they, they purposely put two condensers in there. So in theory, you still have the same amount of of six ounces. Technically this one here holds three per circuit. I forget what the exact amount was. I think it's four, but this one here has 3.1 ounces or 88 grams. So it um, it's just one of them things that, you know, cheating the rules just to get to where they gotta get. That added so much money to it, two compressors instead of just one bigger one. That's our government at work, people. So anyhow, I'll uh, see you guys on the next one. If you like it, give a big thumbs up. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.